Hi, I'm Catlin, and I took the lead on writing Chapter 11, The Flipped Classroom. And in the chapter on the flipped classroom, I talk about what are the benefits of the flipped classroom, what does the flipped classroom really mean, um, what are the goals of this inversion. I also talk about strategies for designing a flipped lesson. So as an educator, moving to a blended learning model, we have to think about lesson planning differently. So instead of thinking about planning for a 50-minute period or a 90-minute block, period or whatever your schedule is, we have to start thinking about lessons as weaving together online elements and those in-class learning moments. So you might have a lesson that begins in class, extends online, and then comes back into the classroom. So I talk about the three parts of my flipped lesson, how I design them. I share multiple examples of flipped lessons to give teachers a sense for how do you provide context and how do you flip and not just present information online, but how do you flip and engage? Because if we're putting this information online, then we should also be focused on engaging students around that information. So when they come to class, they're more prepared to actually apply what they've, the information they've seen online for homework or they've watched online in the classroom. I in, in that vein, I talk about, for a lot of teachers, one of the big hurdles for the flipped classroom is, well, what if kids don't do homework? Or I'm concerned about students not having access outside the classroom. So I talk about how teachers can actually marry station rotation and the flipped classroom and pull the flip into a station rotation model with an in-class flip, where one of the stations is a student watching a video or students watching a video flipped information and maybe engaging with that information using a tool like Edpuzzle, and then how they would move on then to another station that asks them to extend and apply what they've learned in the online flip station. So I talk about strategies for designing that lesson because obviously as a teacher, you don't want kids starting in the extend and apply station without having first seen the video content. I also talk about thinking beyond videos. So yes, we, we mostly hear about the flip classroom as teachers choosing to flip information with video where they're recording lectures or quick explanations, but we can also flick, flip with text and engage students around text in a more dynamic way and with images, obviously with video, and even with online resources. So I talk a bit about the, the, the different media that are out there, what are some great places to grab media online that you can use to flip. I definitely talk about the challenges of the flip classroom, that access out of outside of class, which I know is a big concern for teachers who don't want to set students up to fail, those kids who don't have reliable access outside of class. So what are some strategies to mitigate those um, pro those concerns or those issues? And then also, you know, what do you do with kids who come to class and haven't done the flipped lesson and are unprepared to really apply that information? Um, and then, like I said, I go into the in-class flip and talk about that as a strategy. It's also a nice strategy for elementary where we may not be wanting to send students home with homework. And so what does it look like and what, why would we still flip? if it's in class? What are the benefits of allowing students the opportunity to really pace their own learning, pause a recording, turn to a neighbor, ask a question, get some clarification. So I talk a little bit about those things. And then at the end of the chapter, there are questions that range from um, kind of asking you to think about what are your students' access? If you're not sure what access is like outside of the classroom, can you use something like a Google form to survey kids to get a sense of, is the flipped classroom a viable model for your population? Um, think about how much time do I spend each week up in front of kids kind of just giving them information um, and a lot of us spend a lot of our time in front of the class kind of repeating the same information whether it's because we teach five periods and we're going over the same information with five different classes or because we go over information and then students are struggling and they need to hear that information again so thinking about how much time do we talk at or kind of talk at our kids what do we say would be beneficial to put online so kids have access to it over and over again? Um, would the in-class flip work for you? Why or why not? So there's a collection of questions at the end of the chapter to get you thinking about 
whether this is a good fit as a model, what are some of the challenges you might face, what's some of the support you think you'll need from administrators or leadership to make this model happen. So as always, for anybody reading the book, we'd love for you to engage in kind of an ongoing conversation about all things blended learning using the hashtag BL in action.